by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. Nearby. Inside the cabin, he was greeted by 
Hi, Rafe Tyler. Hey, is old man Graham around? Yeah. Rafe, we better get down to the trail right away. Graham's heading this way now? He sure is. So let's ride down to the road and be ready to take him over. Come on. <laughs> Tom Graham from the pit and placed him on the ground. Otto, he's still breathing. 
Please get my medical kit. During the next hour, the Lone Ranger treated the wounded man with almost professional skill. At the end of that time, he rose to his feet. Toto, there's nothing more we can do. Uh, we wonder him still alive. He's old, Toto, but also strong. Let's hope he's strong enough to stand up under a journey. Journey? Kimosabe, why you take him? Trail town is less than three miles from here. The drought caused most people to move. But fortunately, our friend Dr. Levitt remained there. The Lone Ranger and Toto, with Tom Graham on an improvised litter that they lashed to the rancher's horse, prepared to leave the mine area. The Lone Ranger studied the hoof prints of the two horses that had evidently been there a short time before. Hoof prints, easy to follow. Yes, the markings on one of the horseshoes are very distinctive. We keep eyes on prints. And when we get to main trail, we see which way them go. Easy, steady, easy, easy, follow. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Tom Graham's horse, if you saw it again? Uh, sure, why? It's across the street in front of Dr. Levitt's 
off. Oh, you're crazy. No, come on outside. I want you to see for yourself. Oh, wait till I down this. Uh, come on. Don't go outside yet. You can see across the street to this window seat. Well, love it. Rafe. That's Graham's horse, sure enough. But hold it. See that engine coming out of the doctor's office here? Hey, he's going over to the hitching post where we left our horses. Well, doggone, look at him now. He's picking up your horse's hoof, studying it. Redskins up to something. Pete, we're going to grab him fast. Rafe, followed by Pete, dashed into the street and ran to the hitching post, where Tonto had just completed an examination of the shoes on two horses. The Indian straightened up to face the pointed guns of both crooks. All right, you sneaking, thieving Redskin. Stand right where you are. What's the idea? What were you looking at? The look at horse shoes. You own horses? Yeah, these are our horses. Trying to steal them, are you? No. We follow them here for money. You hear that, Ray? Yeah. Engine, who was that you brought into the doctor's office? Man, me find, and my... Man, you shoot, maybe. Pete, it is Graham. Engine, that... That man isn't alive, is he? He couldn't be. Oh, Ray, you fool. Engine, set your horse over there in front of the doctor's office. Uh -huh. Then turn around and walk to it. And take this red skin to the boss and let him know what's happened. Move, Engine. Nobody's going to help you do what I say. Move. Uh -huh. Tonto had been about to make a gesture of resistance, knowing well that the Lone Ranger in a wooded area nearby would see what was taking place and come to his rescue. But when Pete Hayden mentioned the mysterious boss, the Indian decided to submit to capture in the hope of learning the boss's identity. He raised his hands above his head and in doing so made a secret signal with his fingers that all was well with him. The Lone Ranger, from his hiding place, saw the signal and smiled. Tonto evidently doesn't want me to interfere yet. Silver, they've turned their horses around and are coming this way. Quiet now, big fella. We're going to follow them. Rafe Tyler and Pete Hazen attracted no attention to themselves as they led the obedient Tonto from town to the ranch of Clyde Watson, which was on the outskirts. They stopped near the stable. Oh, where the hell? Pete, the boss may have someone with him. So I'll take the engine into the stable here and wait. You go to the house and get the boss out here quick. Clyde Watson's stable was a large one. It was almost ten minutes before Watson, hurrying after Pete Hazen, entered and walked to the stall where Ray Tyler held Tonto. None of the men were aware of the figure that had made its way through the rear door and was standing inside in the shadows. Watson was indignant. Rafe! What's this? Pete tells me. He says you bungled the job. That Graham's escaped from the mine shaft. He's in trail town now. Is that right? Yeah, boss. The engine says he found Graham alive. When Pete shot him, we both thought he was dead or would be so. I told you I should have finished Never mind that part. He's still alive. That means I don't get his ranch. Boss, you get it all right. He said if he didn't have the money to pay off your notes, he'd go to court and claim his property. The money's hidden in the bushes behind the cafe. Nobody knows it's there. I suppose Graham had some ideas about my having him held up. Suppose he had some idea who you fellas were. That's a snake. Uh, go ahead, Pete. Graham pulled Rafe's bandana off his face. What? He knew Rafe, Rafe you bungling clock of an idiot. You'll die for this. I'll right, kill you right now. Boss, wait. It's true, Graham saw me, but that doesn't mean he'll identify He me. knows you work for me. What do you mean? I live. The engine told me he's still unconscious. Uh, hey, still unconscious, eh? Well, maybe there's a chance to make sure he doesn't come, too. I'll have to handle this myself. We'll do whatever you say, boy. Oh, you will foul things up again. I'll go to the doctor's office. Doc Levitt doesn't suspect me, I'm sure. You two take care of this Indian after I leave. And stay here. I'll get the money, too. Watson hurried outside to where his saddled horse was in readiness. Pete looked at Rafe. Yeah. Instead of coming here and telling him, we should have taken the money and their moves. Yeah. But right now, let's get rid of this engine. I wouldn't bother to try. Hey, what? Damn this, man. Raise your hand. No, I'll shoot you. Oh, my God. You weren't fast enough either. Good, Kim Fabi. He think you near. I heard everything. I don't take over. Bandage these men. I'll take their guns. And I'm going directly after that man who left here. When you finish with those two, take them into trail town at once. Did he say anything? What's the law there? Please, out of the way. 
Baltimore Ranger pushed past the doctor, entered the room, and saw Clyde Watson bent over the wounded man with his hands grasping Watson on a grand throat. I'll end it this time for sure. Don't kill me. The Lone Ranger grabbed Watson's arm. Stop it, you cow. Then the masked man's fist crashed into Watson's jaw. As the would-be murderer collapsed, the doctor said, What's the meaning of this? Doctor, don't ask questions. Just attend to Mr. Graham. You must save him. Yes. While Dr. Levitt treated the gasping Tom Graham, the Lone Ranger tied the wrists and ankles of Clyde Watson. Then the masked man said, You can't murder anyone now, Watson. So I'll leave you here for a while. I'm going to the rear of the cafe and find the money your pal hid in the bushes there. The doctor's immediate assistant saved the life of Thomas Graham. That evening, when Tonto had brought the two other crooks to Trail Town, the sheriff, summoned from the county seat of Orville, learned the whole sordid story. Graham recovered his money thanks to the masked man and his Indian friend. Those two rattlesnakes, Tyler and Hazen, have told everything. Uh, Watson's talking too, isn't he? He's trying to save his own hide. <laughs> he even told how he cheated the people he lent money to and have the illegal interest rates he charged them. Uh, they don't have to pay him that money now, do they? Uh, the courts will decide that. Uh, I'm betting they get their property back and that Watson goes to jail for usury as well as attempted murder. He's lucky he's not going to be hanged. He might have been if the masked man hadn't arrived when he did. Say, uh, that masked man was a friend of yours, wasn't he? Yes, my friend, Graham's friend, the law's friend, and the friend of everyone in the West. You see, Sheriff, he's the Lone Ranger. I don't uh, Champions are made, not born. Let's see how Tom Fears, pass catching end for the Los Angeles Rams, got on his way. At 12, Tom played football a lot, and many a bump is what he got. But he kept trying, never quit. And here's what helped to keep him fit. He ate his Wheaties every bit. Today, Tom sparks those touchdown drives. It's Wheaties still on which he thrives. Wheaties to Fears, there's a pass combination that's been clicking steady now for 19 years. Real energy in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Tom, smack that pass. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions of eight, not four. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions.